Hey, how are you doing? Um, before we get started, if you want to see more of this content, hit like and subscribe. And if you want someone else to see this, the share button would be massively helpful. I would super appreciate that. That'd be really sweet. So, um, as we get started, first bit of news. Um, kind of an update on the Switch Pro situation is that there has been no updates to the Switch Pro situation. Um, so it seems like maybe my hunches have been at least slightly proven so far. Um, and it kind of my my observation is that with the announcement of of a release date of Breath of the Wild 2, why would you want to throw new hardware into that mix and muddy up that situation? Is the original Switch going to play Breath of the Wild 2? How is it going to be different on the on the updated console? Like you know, so all these questions really just kind of muddy that situation up in a way that doesn't sound smart. So in a sense, I feel like they're just not going to talk either not bringing that kind of information in yet, or maybe the Switch Pro is still just out there and not coming yet. So that's my hunch. Now then we got Microsoft had their showcase and we saw Halo multiplayer. And um, about the multiplayer is that the multiplayer itself is gonna be free to play and monetized by player customization on a very Fortnite, buy your skins, customize equipment. Now one observation that someone told me that I've learned from someone is that when you play a multiplayer match and you have two teams, one is typically red, one's typically blue. When you have this depth of customer characterization, they might leave behind that idea of that every character has the color scheme matching their team. So that's going to be kind of interesting. How are you going to handle Halo multiplayer when you don't have colored teams anymore? The rest of the multiplayer aspect of that looked pretty standard Halo multiplayer, looked pretty fun, looked pretty good. I'm a pretty big fan of the Master Chief Collection. Um, I never spent that much time playing like any multiplayer games, so it, it, you know I, I kind of like it for what it is. But I'm not. I'm. A, I'm. A, when it comes to the Halo, I'm a pretty 50/50 campaign to multiplayer type of person. Cyberpunk 2077 is coming back to the PlayStation Store sometime next week, which is pretty surprising because PlayStation took it off their storefront just because um, of how many people were trying to return it. So it seems like they either have made enough adjustments since then, or that controversy has died down enough where they can let it come back, see how it reacts to new hardware, both you know PlayStation 5, whenever it comes to that. But regardless, they say they're really still not recommending it to play on a base PS4, because no matter what, that hardware probably just isn't power enough, powerful enough to push all the stuff that's going on in that game, especially graphically, I mean. Um, even with its bugs and its issues, that game is still like the de facto benchmark game right now. No one uses, like if you want to see how powerful your new PC is, you're going to run Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark. They're still making adjustments for the base consoles, for the last gen consoles, and they're also working on releases specifically for PS5, next gen, Xbox One, Series X. Those versions are still being made and other updates as well. Then another smaller piece of news is that there's going to be some DLC for Resident Evil 8. So that's more reason for me to finish up my playthroughs of the current Resident Evil games I'm still playing, like 3. I'm playing the original version of 3 right now. I want to be able to play uh, the train one, what's the train one called? Zero. And I want to keep working my way up and get to 8 before, before you know, while well, there's still people talking about it. I've been chugging my way through that series. I've played, I played 2 Remake, then I played 4. And then I played the PS4 version of the original game remake, and then I'm on my I'm on the original version of three on PlayStation One. I have it, and I'm playing through it right now, trying to get started on it. So I'm kind of easing my way back into original Resident Evil. That's pretty neat. And finally, our last uh, bigger piece of news is that a relative launch window for PSVR2 has been announced. Looks like it's going to be coming out for holiday 2022. So we got another good year and a half before that's going to be coming out, but it's kind of nice to know that Sony is still willing to put more resources and time into a VR platform, which is pretty cool because I have a Valve Index myself and I'm kind of just waiting for more VR hardware to catch up to that kind of level. So that, you know, just more people have access to the, you know, high-end VR 
capability and kind of seeing what's really possible for VR out there. Substantial upgrades include obviously high resolution, haptic feedback in the controllers just like the PS5 controller. That's a pretty um, interesting detail. Of course, they probably integrate that technology into there. Touch detection on the on the controller for hand finger detection. So it's kind of nice that you know there's there gonna be more VR stuff out there for more people, for more companies. Um, because so far, the PS4 VR has sold about five million units, which is a pretty strong vector for VR adoption. Considering, probably one of the stronger, more available VR platforms out there, other than maybe like the Quest 2 at the time. Right now, it seems like more people are just gonna be stepping into into VR, and hopefully more people kind of buy into VR. I'm definitely a VR gamer myself. I definitely want VR to be more popular. I might even start a VR specific video uh, series on this channel. So look out for those. Maybe I'll eventually get to doing that somehow. I don't really have any ideas yet. Maybe I'll do another st t style news video, but there's already plenty of those out there for VR people. But um, I'll try to figure something out. I was gonna. That's almost the reason why I got the the, the green screen because I wanted to make those kind of um, really cool like picture and person picture and picture VR videos, like um like you see the augmented reality Beat Saber videos, which are really cool. So that's half the reason I got the green screen was to maybe pull off something like that. That's it for the headlines that I found interesting this week so far. Comment if you have any other de cool details or news items that'd be cool to talk about, or just hit me up. I'd message back everybody. I'm more than happy to talk to people down in the comments anytime, so about pretty much anything. So, yeah, just have a good day and see you guys later.